Faster my good afternoon. Welcome to Late Lunch and we've come down north, H. We have come down north. Or is that up north? Or is that a date for another day? We are at Ramsey Courthouse, the hub of the community up here. It really is. We are continuing our Village Hall series. So many people to speak to. I think you can hear some of them in the background. We're also going to be treated to some music by the local community choir as well. Ramsey Town. Ramsey Town it's got to be, hasn't it? But first, this is all about friendships which are forged here. We thought we'd start with a little bit of wet, wet, wet. Wet, 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 oh. a little help from my friends. It's not appropriate for the weather, though. It's going to be sun shining. Yeah, it, sun moments. always shines down north, though, doesn't it? It I always think. does, they yeah, always say. That absolutely. Is the, that's the common saying. Welcome to Ramsey Courthouse. We are here this afternoon as we continue our Village Hall series. Really looking forward to this one. There is so much that happens here and so many plans for the future, which we're going to be finding out about over the course of the next hour. And we started with wet, 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 because I think... <laughs> Well, the courthouse is um, the hub of the community, and community is about friendships, whether they are existing friendships which have made this happen, or friendships that have formed here, and I think that has been a key to this Village Hall series so far. Oh, absolutely, and I think you just have to see the people around here again today. We've got all sectors of the community, we've got a lovely table of vegetables and fruit over there, we're coming to in a moment, we've got the wonderful summer singers here who rehearse here. It's already used, I think, widely, and it's just going to get better and better as the years go on. It really is. Well, let's uh, meet Andy Cowie, Chair of Ramsey Town Commissioners now. Andy, thank you very much for letting us uh, broadcast from here. No, uh, you're very welcome. It's nice to see you, Beth. Good afternoon. And uh, I'd just like to welcome yourselves, Aaron, Beth, and the Max Radio team to the heart of Ramsey. It's great to see you. We really appreciate you coming up here and enjoying some of our lovely weather. <laughs> it definitely is brighter up here. It definitely is, Andy. Sky, this Always. is a, a real important building isn't it? it always has been in the heart of Ramsey but great to have it in use as it is now no it's it's marvelous uh, obviously we did uh, quite a bit of trouble obtaining the building for the town uh, but that was all sorted out uh, very successfully and uh, we've run a whole load of events in the building over the last uh, year and a half and it's been really successful and it's proven to be that, that heart of the community that we hoped for and there's some big plans ahead uh, for the future of the building which we hope will just uh, make it go from strength to strength. And there are plans to get more and more groups involved really in, in actually using it for whatever purpose they need. Very much so, yes. Uh, it is a community building benefit for the community uh, and, and a space for people to use and enjoy as they can. And we've had uh, all sorts of varied events, uh, theatre productions, open mic, uh, I could go on forever. It's been, it's been very popular indeed. The list is endless. Mm. Has it been difficult actually sort of drawing up plans going forward? Because there are so many varied activities, I guess, as you say, you're talking about the open mic, you're talking about the choirs coming and rehearsing here. Some people might just want to come in and maybe use it as a hub where they can come and sit and chat and have a coffee. Indeed, I mean, it, it, having so many different uses for a building uh, is, does put some pressure on, on making it a, a space that everybody can use. That is true, but uh, there have to be some compromises, I think. And again, the building itself is a very old traditional building, as you mentioned and it does have some limitations which we have to work around but uh, the team from the heart of Ramsey have got some really exciting plans there uh, and we fully support those and we'll Hopefully that will give us the best solution. And you say the limitations, is that just in the nature of the building and the way it's actually made up? Because it was a, a courthouse, obviously. It, it, it was designed as a courthouse, yeah. obviously. I mean, there's a couple of shells around the back there, which you've seen, I think. Uh, yes, uh, and, yeah, uh, I have rather close quarters, actually. <laughs> Closer than I was anticipating, but yes. <laughs> but it's great, isn't it, having a building which has got this history? That, that's absolutely right. There. Yes, I think that, that makes the building special as well. So although it does impose some limitations on the use, it, it's great to have that, that character and history behind it. It does beg the question, isn't it, what can one do with some cells? Well, I've got, I'm sure there are many ideas and many I don't answers like we can give that there, but, uh, <laughs> in the next course of the hour. Andy, we'll probably speak to you again throughout the programme, but thank you so much again for uh, having us here this afternoon. I want to talk to you, uh, somebody who is key in an event that already happens here, and this is the Isle of Man Farmers Market. Let's uh, introduce Dot Price now. Hello. Uh, Dot, just tell us a little bit about the Isle of Man Farmers Market. Right, well it's a group of people that promote the growing and selling of Manx produce. Um, we have a whole committee, there's lots of markets throughout the island. The one in Ramsey has been the oldest, we're in our 13th year now, and this is the best venue we have had. Thanks to Ramsey Town Commissioners for all their support, we've been in car parks, we've been in the MER station, we've been in community centres, but this is definitely the best one. It's going it's to be a hub. proper home. Yes, it's the hub. And the nice thing is we're outside when the well is good and when the well is inclement, they're allowed to come inside. Perfect. We nice. have crafts as well as food. 
Ah, yeah. I did spot actually just looking over there. Can we go and see these vegetables over looking on the corner over oh, on yeah, this okay. table? Because there are uh, some things in there, Doc, which I did not associate with the Isle of Man. <laughs> Everything that you see on that table has been grown on the Isle of Man. Including oh. the grapes? Including the grapes. grapes. They're grown in a greenhouse in Laxey. A friend of mine does the barter system. She gives me the grapes, I give her cucumbers for her juice. And so we like the barter and system. And look at that, because this, you wouldn't yeah. recognise that instantly as a cucumber, would you? I think it's crystal apple, I think crystal it's called. Crystal apple cucumber. The seeds actually came from Australia, from a manxman who comes over here every TT, and he sent me them as a present. Really? So this is the third year we've grown them. Can we try a piece? They are very popular. Try them. Okay. Mm. They're just like an ordinary cucumber, only a little bit sweeter. And a oh, little taste of apple. Lovely. Really good. They're very really popular good. with kids. Children well, like them in their lunchbox. Mm. They're kiddie size, like them spitting cucumber seeds onto the <laughs> microphone. They're kiddie size, they're really wonderful. Yeah. Mm. Well, everything is. If you look at the little chap tomatoes, they're grown in the polytunnel. They're the same, all different varieties. And uh, they look good on a plate and they're very sweet. So it's all to encourage children to have a healthy diet. And do you think we're getting the message now about how important it is to support local producers yes. and how much better it is for us to do I that? I think so. We've built up a good trade throughout the years. We've got the same customers come back all the time. We also It's all seasonal, so you'll not get strawberries or anything at Christmas. You will get them from Bala Nelson in the summer with their tomatoes and everything, but we do everything to promote local. And if we don't grow it, we will sell it if it's grown on the Isle of Man. And there's so much more interest, I think, in local fruit and veg yes, now people want yeah. the provenance of what they're eating You're and right if you can there, come yeah. from just around the corner they think that's all the better a few years ago it was all about oh let's get things from the other side of the world but when you can get beautiful produce like this yeah. why not and as you say grapes absolutely amazing remind us then when the farmers market is here dot in ramsey every saturday come rain or shine we only miss one and that's the one between christmas and new year because everybody's overeating but we're here every <laughs> saturday from 10 until 4 and regardless of the weather you've got a busy afternoon then ahead preparing. yes i'm going home now to pick and pack carrots that's Wonderful. the start. Oh. Ah. Thank you so, thank so much you. for being here. Thank and that, that cucumber is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. It's very oh, healthy. Brilliant. Bye. You are listening to Late Lunch. We are continuing our Village Hall series and we are at Ramsey Courthouse this afternoon. Um, okay, here's the song link here. Oh, that has made me smile. Here's Texas with Inner Smile. Get it? Fantastic. And that is the problem with eating cucumbers on air, in that sometimes it goes down the wrong way. There's been the best been choking away on a cucumber, beautiful though it was, but yes, don't talk with your mouthful, children. That's always the answer. That is the motto for today. This is Late Lunch with Beth and Howard. We are live from Ramsey Courthouse this afternoon, and we've been talking about local produce and local producers, and that sort of extends into the conversation we're going to have now with Chris Blatcher, who's from the Ramsey Chamber of Commerce, because... Chris, Ramsey is the place to go if you want to find an independent retailer. Oh, it absolutely is. Um, we've got a good selection of some of the bigger retailers as well, with likes of the co-op and, and such like. But if you want something different, um, we have over 100 uh, independent retailers in the town. So you tend to find something just different than you can find on the bigger high street. So it's really good. And obviously the improvements that have been made to um, pedestrian access and whatever over the past year or so, have you noticed a difference in, in footfall now? Um, I, th I think Ramsey has always been fairly strong footfall because we've got the advantage of parking and we've got good transport lists, you know, uh, links, we have free parking. So you can get into the town, uh, you can park outside of the shops that you want to. Um, so that's, that's always been good. It's been very good to see the regeneration area has revived, particularly around the courthouse area, um, you know, with the events and, and sort of open mic sessions that they have on. And it's a much more of a community feel in the town. And I think that's what it's about, isn't it? Because if you come up north or down north, depending on how you look at it, you do have these that feeling of uniqueness if you come to Ramsey. You've got each independent store is different, whereas sometimes, wonderful though the chains are, there's a feeling slightly more of a faceless feeling, isn't it? You've got that nice personal touch here. Yes, and I think it, you know, it gives you a, a sort of more of a traditional shop, but I mean the retailers here are very aware of being competitive, but it gives you the tra traditional shop of um, you know different type of service where you're actually quite often talking to the owner of the business. So... Um, you know that that gives a different feel to it totally. I think now we talk so much don't we about how people actually don't 
venture out to the shops as much as they used to because they prefer the convenience of, of internet shopping. And that was a, a real trend. But I'm, I'm really wondering if we've, we've seen an end to that and maybe we're turning the corner. I, I certainly think you've seen a plateau in it. And I think, um, you know, people have realised that uh, maybe seeing the item in, in person is a lot a lot better than sort of taking a guess at what it's like on the internet. Um, also, I think some of the retailers have switched on to that quite a bit. So they actually will offer a delivery service or things like that. So you can still get the advantage of shopping um, on the internet, if you like, but with a local retailer. And it's good to support the local retailers because they, in turn, feed back into the community, which is really, really important. It, you know, it supports our hospitals and everything. So. And as far as an organisation like Ramsey Chamber of Commerce goes, just how important is that nowadays, would you say? Again, I think it's very important. It's sort of a voice for the businesses. So we liaise with the government departments. Uh, we have a good working relationship in Ramsey with the commissioners here. And I think the private public sector working here has, has proved it's a good model for the rest of the island really that we can have some really big successes so that is really important. And uh, Chris you've got another significant role uh, in the town you are the uh, the fire officer here as well oh, so you're going to be going back on uh, on duty, duty so yeah brilliant that you could come duty down course. but you were a Ramsey man through and through? Uh, I've been here most of my life uh, um, on the island I'm not born here but uh, yeah I've been here 30 years so uh, yeah I would count myself as a Ramsey man now. <laughs> I think I'm allowed. <laughs> <laughs> you are. I think 30 years will give you that one. Is there still interest coming forward? You're saying that obviously every time I come up north, there seems to be another shop popped up. There's still more interest in independent traders opening up. Yeah, there's uh, there's still a lot of interest. I think probably one of the problems we actually have is there's not an abundance of empty units. Um, so when an empty unit or when a unit becomes empty, it's quite often filled quickly um, because it's a good opportunity for someone to come in at a reasonable cost and and a, a, you know, quite a high footfall of public. So yeah, it's really popular. Like that. You've also got the legal, professional and corporate companies here as well. Yeah, I think you can probably uh, find every service sector from you know the lawyers and, and sort of house buying and everything here. So we, we cover all bases. You can really do anything you want in Ramsey. Chris, thank you so much for taking the time to be here this afternoon. Uh, this is Light Lunch, live Lunch. from the courthouse. Nearly got the name right there. I know what you meant. Yeah. yeah. Live Late Lunch from the courthouse. Yeah. Yeah, we're there. We're we're, there. We are there. And um, we will be back in a moment. I've got another song, okay, because we talk about friendships yes, and we're yes. talking about, you know, being together with people, making you happy. There's another song coming up. You're going to love it. I'm bated breath already. Okay, we'll be back in a moment. There you go, Pharrell well, Williams, mother. happy. Thank you, yeah, very happy. It well, we're is. very happy because we're up in Ramsey, up north, down north at the Ramsey Courthouse today with a veritable smorgasbord of people from across the Ramsey community here as well, as you can hear in the background. And we have now joined with Colin Douglas. We are. Colin is the chair of the Ramsey branch of the Royal British Legion, and that's especially poignant uh, for where we are because just outside is the War Memorial. And a few years ago, Colin, it was decided to do something very special to mark the World War I veterans who sadly lost their lives from Ramsey. Uh, yes, for the centenary of the uh, World War I, uh, we decided that um, we'd like to do something for the uh, veterans that lost their lives and they're all on the uh, memorial there, all the names. Uh, and we came up with the idea of a couple of ideas, some that didn't fly, and we eventually ended up with um, uh, planting a cross for each um, person on the day of their death, at half past six in the evening, um, each evening, uh, for, for that day of their death. Um, so that's been going on now since 1914 and on Wednesday the 11th at 6.30 it's the last one for Private Perry. Uh, Private Perry died from his wounds uh, in, on the 11th of September 1919. Um, I was looking at some of the details in that, he actually got married uh, and I think it was just before he went off to war on the same date. Nice. So it's a, I thought that's sort of strange, like you know. It is. It makes uh, it especially poignant, it I does, think, yes. as well. But, uh, anyway, he is the he's the last one for the uh, World War One people that died in Ramsey or associated with Ramsey. Um, so we've got a special, bit bit more special than usual. Uh, we've got his excellency, excellency coming along uh, to raise a wreath on behalf of the town of Ramsey. Um, and together with the Ramsey Town Commissioners, we'll be planting the, we'll be planting the cross with her uh, Andy Crow, uh, Cowie, sorry, and um, then uh, we've got a bugler for the last post, etc. And that sort of should be very good. Everybody's welcome to attend, and we've all been in and out, come rain or shine. We've always been attended by somebody from the, the Legion and the Town. Commission. And it's just so important, isn't it, especially since we are now uh, over 100 years 
since the First World War, just to, to really remember the sacrifice that was made, and it was so close to us. It was, yes, and uh, as I say, there's 112 um, died uh, from Ramsey in that. I think there's uh, something like uh, 1,200 overall um, from the island itself, and 1,000 uh, or so left from the north of the island anyway to go to war, which was about a third of the population at the time, and they're all aged between um, 19 and 35, more on the, uh, the lower end of the range of the ages, and um, decimated the, uh, the actual uh, you know, pop meal population on the island and that. But they, they all signed up and off they went. Yep. And I think that's the terrifying thing, isn't it? You forget how it did exactly as Colin says, decimate the population because all these young men went off and so many of them never came back again. And you yep. would look around, around just Ramsey, around the island, every little village, you see men who never came back. And the thing is now we've got this information and we know more about them and it, it makes it more real somehow. Uh, yes, we, we compiled a booklet back in... Uh, I think we started about two, uh, nine, uh, sorry, 2012, <laughs> um, compiling the information for the, the people that died uh, and um, marked up on the uh, war memorial. Uh, and from uh, we gathered all that information together as much as we could, identified who they were, where they were, where they died, etc. And um, we also came in and uh, listed them all and got as much information as we could uh, from that. Um, once we compiled it, we put it into this booklet remembering Ramsey's, uh, Ramsey's Fallen and we also gave that information at the end of the day, we gave it on to the Eye Museum uh, where they have all the information as well. And I've got to say that the Ramsey Town Commission has been very helpful also in sourcing information for us and all that, um, getting everything together and as I say on each um, commemorating the death on the day actually of the that person's death uh, has always been a cross laid for them. Sometimes they, where the family still is still available on the island, they come along as well, which makes it all the more poignant. And um, they, lay, they lay it, uh, the cross. Otherwise, it's uh, ourselves, someone from the Legion, or someone from the Ramsey Town Commissioners that lays the cross on their behalf. I was well, pondering that whether they still have a lot of families that are still associated. There, there, there's been a few, there's been quite, uh, quite a lot of them turn up and uh, it's surprising who they are in that, um, uh, in terms of um, that, that they're there and they, they, do, they do tend to turn up and uh, come along and uh, it's been very good when they have done. Well, Colin, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. So that service is taking place on September the 11th. It will start at 6.15, so you need to be here at around 5 past 6. The Lieutenant Governor, Sir Richard Gosney, will be in attendance as well, and a, a wonderfully poignant occasion. It's always is at any of those ceremonies. It really is, yeah. Colin, thank you so thank much. I uh, should just mention, actually, uh, the poppy appeal will start on October the 25th, 25th, and we are told there is going to be a surprise. It's quite a, a, really? quite a unique one coming this year, apparently. Uh, uh, um, just follow me over here because I have found a familiar face who I think we will talk to you in a couple of moments but here she is and I'm hoping against hope that she's brought some food with her <laughs> Georgie Revel we don't normally see lovely, you down lovely these parts there. hello hello and how lovely to see you. Um, lovely to be here. Yeah, this is our courthouse. Well, it is. Our we are going to hear courthouse. all about that in just a few moments. But I'm going to carry on the theme, Howard, of the songs all about friendship You're doing very well and about this. happiness. Yes. And uh, this is a familiar one. I think it might have been a television show theme. Not sure. Go on. OK, I think I got that one. I think I got that one, Beth. Why have you got two? Why have I got two microphones? Mm. Oh, because we are Just so nice high tech off. here, actually. Yeah. Um, You're in we, stereo. That's we the are. Answer, isn't it? I know. I need, yeah. I'm so stereo. important. I need two microphones. I've got a message for you, Howard. Oh, go on. From Marilyn the Goat. Marilyn the Goat. Also available. Friend of mine. On, I, I've no yeah. idea. I don't yeah. ask. Uh, also available at the farmers market tomorrow is Great Taste awarded goat's cheese and ah. milk and other products. Yeah. Yeah. The goat's cheese that is actually worth going for on its own. I'd say. Goat's milk is brilliant as yeah. well. Absolutely love it. Uh, we are live from Ramsey Courthouse this afternoon, and I did mention that we had found one George. Georgie Revel. Now, Georgie, you have a very key role in this establishment's future. Just tell us about it. Yeah, I'm very, very honoured, Beth. So um, I'm one of the trustees, non-remunerated trustees of 
for the Heart of Ramsey Limited. Um, it is a registered charity. It's got, um, it's just been, had the official stamp from the Attorney General's office. So we're very excited about that. It's got a very broad remit. Um, it's all community based. Um, and I'm really excited to get going and get fundraising to get this fabulous building up to scratch. So what is the vision then? And so the vision is really, it's for the community. Um, and it's going to evolve, obviously, depending on everybody's needs and wants. Uh, we are involving the public an awful lot in this because it is your courthouse. Um, so what we hope, we've got planning, planning in at the moment. I think um, Stephen Bevan said that on Monday, the planning um, officer it will do his little talk and the planning committee will decide yay or nay. Uh, it's been recommended that it is passed um, and very excited about um, changing just the inside of this to make it more user friendly uh, getting disabled loose in here um, opening it up a bit um, you know taking some of the mezzanine level out um, and probably um, employing um, a, a, or retaining an interior designer that's used to big spaces and maybe we can she can liaise with Michael Starkey who's one of our oh, local artists, artists. Yes. and you know let's get some lovely fusion manx maybe scandinavian sort of feel to it lovely and airy and light and bright lovely. so this really is going to be a hub for the whole community i think there's a plans for a welcome center and just so much can happen here there is so much can happen i'm just so excited about it and obviously we have engaged the public in this and to find out what they want um i'm hoping it's going to be open from seven in the morning when perhaps we can do some pilates and yoga classes for all ages and then in the evening it will still be open we'll have some um, with a, a, a cafe perhaps run by those with disabilities to give them um, some work experience and you know meet with the public uh, we'll get the elderly in, involved we will get those who are lonely which isn't necessarily the elderly uh, just make a beautiful hub that we, we really need the spectrum yeah. there seems to be a general use thing you're excited about getting involved in doing this work but there seems to be an excitement generally I think from the public and people who are going to use the building about the ideas yeah I hope so yeah and um, we are engaging them a lot and we need those to come forward we've got uh, that want to use the building um, there'll be a lot of volunteers involved we are going to appoint a manager um, for a couple of years to do lots of form filling and to liaise with the public because um, the five trustees we, we've all got full-time jobs uh, um, so this is just a little thing on the side for us. I've just got a really a little side dish, you <laughs> might say. A little uh, side dish. Very good, I've very just good. got to conjure up a little five hundred thousand to, uh, you know, which oh, it's a main I, I yeah. <laughs> well, it's a bit of a daunting prospect, but but I'm I'm ready for the challenge. Yeah. Oh, Georgie, it's so lovely to talk to you. I did notice that you walked in with some brownies. Where well, did you yes, put them? I did. Um, I did put them very Looking. close to your little hot desk over there. So there was some brownies there ready for you, my darling. Wonderful. Georgie, remind people where they can find out more about Thor. Great name. Oh, so yeah, we've brandy. got... Hammer uh, that one home. Yeah. So actually today is Photographic Friday, I think. So um, I'll be posting something on the Ramsey Courthouse Instagram page and on the Facebook page. And um, we do have a website as well. So please go visit that and, uh, you know, get on your keyboard and any interesting ideas, fire them over to us. Wonderful. Georgie Revel, so lovely to talk to you as ever. We are live from Ramsey Courthouse as part of our Village Hall series. In a moment, we're going to be talking about another fantastic place that there is in Ramsey, Murrick Park. The Murrick Park. Absolutely love it. It's been there forever, you know. It has. I've got another song, though, just coming up in a couple of minutes. Are you right. ready? Yeah, go on. Are you it's, sure? Uh, no, I'm, I'm more than ready. Go okay, for it. Okay, we'll yeah. be back after this. A very happy hour, and we're having a very happy lunch hour here at Ramsey, the heart of the community at the Ramsey Courthouse. It's been fantastic. It really has. And actually, we're going to talk about something now, which is obviously not directly here, but a huge part of Ramsey. Uh, Barbara Wallace is with us. Barbara, remind us of your title. I'm the Technical Services Manager for Ramsey Town Commissioners. And you have some responsibility for Murrick Park. We were having a bit of a debate about Murick, how you actually pronounce with a K, it. Isn't it. Murrick Park. Murrick. Yeah. Just yeah. yeah, say it quickly. That's yeah. normally what you do, <laughs> isn't it? Um, but there's been a very special award recently. Yes, we are really, really pleased to say that we got awarded the green flag 
Yeah, and that is for Keep Britain Tidy. How significant is that? I think it's very significant for Ramsey. Um, it recognises all the work that the guys have done and put into the into the park and everything for everybody. So, yeah, Douglas of Nine, I think it is now. So, yeah. Yes, they do very well. They're not the best. <laughs> And how, much work, how much work is involved then? Because it's obviously it's the parks, it's the gardens, and it's also what keeping everything spick and span, but also the actual overall display, is it? It's not just the displays. I mean, you, we have the events that kind of held through the park all year. We have the different um, sports events. Different people use the park. It's, there's a lot more to it than just kind of having the play area and just the flowers, really. And the fact is, it's externally judged, isn't it? It's a huge, huge thing. This is um, also used across Europe, in Australia, New Zealand. So it is yeah. no mean feat to do this. Yeah, we're really proud of the guys and kind of what they've achieved. A feather in the cap. And the Moorig Park, it seems to me it's been there forever, because I remember going there for Sunday school picnics, for heaven's sake. And I think my grandma went there before that. It just seems to be one of those places which you always think has always been there and just gets better. Well, it really does. And you can just go there for a day out. There is literally, I know we say this a lot, but there is something for the whole family there. And it's become... Um, a key place for significant events in Ramsey. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. You have the Grand Fondo, I think, which started there. There's also um, fireworks that you have there. We went during the summer, actually, for the first time, I went in the, um, you know, the pedalos, and we had the kids pedalling as well, and I turned around and realised they weren't pedalling, and that's why my legs were so sore. <laughs> no answer to that is there, there realistic I always used to go on the putt-putt boats are they still there I don't know there no. used to be the putt-putts I used to love those little ones that chugged around you didn't have to pedal at all then oh. I remember the bumper boats ah they were the best yes ones. Yeah. No, they don't have them anymore either oh. <laughs> um, but I think if you the head gardener Bobby Cunningham and the yeah. team have done such a magnificent job I mean it's this is a year-round thing as much as you think about gardens in summer yes it is they're um, putting a lot of time into all the displays that they do and making sure that everything's there for all the events and everything else there's a lot of planning goes into it and how many guys and girls actually work there is there is there a, quite a few we've got four actually okay. uh, five sorry well it's quite a lot of work then for five yeah <laughs> yeah we don't want to miss anyone out <laughs> yeah so yeah i think they do really well they do very well they've got some it? challenging conditions as well i mean we've got the bowling green there as well when you think of where the park is you know it used to be the estuary to go down to the beach so i think yeah the guys do really well i'm really proud of what they've managed to achieve hmm. wonderful barbara thank you so much for popping along and talking to us about that thank really you. is a feather thank in the you. cap uh, we have reached the climax oh, now just of keep your eyes show. left of those brownies um oh yes the, the food is still on the table there but uh, we're just walking across the room now and here are the summer singers oh, you've gone ominously they quiet <laughs> They have been practising, though, to be fair, quietly in the background, so I think been. they're looking quietly yeah. confident. Uh, Sue Collier, lovely that you could join us this afternoon. Tell us a little bit about the Summer Singers. Well, it's a community choir in Ramsey. Uh, we have singers from as far afield as Douglas and Laxey. Uh, anyone's welcome to join us, as they say. Some are singers and some are not. <laughs> but Hence the name. A it's bit just of a joke. <laughs> very good. <laughs> um, yeah, it's been going for about 17 years and anybody's welcome. We rehearse from uh, April to September and we do about five or six concerts a year. We uh, were taking part in the uh, Island at War and we're singing today. And there's also the grand finale concert tomorrow. Yes, that's our main fundraising concert where we'll be uh, singing at St Paul's Church at 7.30. We've got a great repertoire. We've got uh, Gareth Moore on the organ. We've got um, Michael Corkle as a tenor. Uh, we've got our own Liz Marshall on piano. And uh, did I say Judith Lay? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I've heard of her from somewhere. Yeah. Yes. So is the repertoire varied for the choir? Do you have a mixed? Yeah, we have a, a great repertoire. We have sacred and secular. We have funny. We have serious. We have jolly. We have something to suit everybody. Oh, right. Is that right, so. everyone? <laughs> <laughs> Well, it is so lovely that you could be here this afternoon for us. Um, let's just take a, a moment just to thank everybody here at the Courthouse again for hosting us this afternoon. It has been absolutely it has wonderful. It has been wonderful. It really rams it home just how well used this centre already is. And just it's going to get better, isn't it, as this work goes on? Oh, it really is a great future here. Thank you to our engineer, Matty Cunningham, who has sat by those brownies and Dangerously not touched close them to once. the brownies. He's been on the grapes already, I've noticed that. Well, yes. <laughs> uh, Sarah Hendy has been producing our social media. So if you go head to the Manx Radio Facebook page, loads of photographs and video on there and Alex Brindley has been pushing the buttons back at Broadcasting ah, House so, so thank you all very much indeed uh, but Sue I wonder if you would mind singing us out this afternoon I will do yes 
with great pleasure. Can I just also mention that my husband, Jeff, is normally the musical director and he will be conducting tomorrow night. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. So what are you going to sing for us? Uh, we're going to sing Ramsey Town. Hey. Oh, what else? Thank you so much. Um, we've had a wonderful time here. Um, I do hope you enjoy this version of the Summer Singers singing Ramsey Town. Thank mm -hmm. you. 